Good. Welcome to the McMillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is Dr. Nicholas Alipui, an expert in child health and development and former United Nations Director and Senior Advisor on the post-2015 development agenda and, more recently, Director of Programs for UNICEF. He is a senior fellow at the Macmillan Center and is teaching a course on child health and development in context of sustainable development. He has more than 30 years of experience in strategic leadership, intergovernmental negotiations, child rights advocacy, and programming in diverse country and regional settings. Today, we'll talk with Dr. Alapui about the UN's 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in regard to child rights. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you so much. So let's start with um, the origins of the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, as um, some abbreviate them, and then, you know, what their purpose is. Right at the turn of the century, uh, the millennium, in fact, uh, the world had already had a series of international treaties, human rights treaties, and international conventions mm -hmm. on sustainable development, on climate, etc. Um, and it was the perfect time uh, at the turn of the millennium to gather around uh, world leaders to decide uh, on some goals for development mm -hmm. in the coming millennium. Right. And so there was a Millennium Declaration at the summit that was held in uh, New York at the turn of the millennium. And along with it, uh, we came up uh, in the UN with those eight Millennium Development Goals that set uh, global goals for development, mostly in the socioeconomic area, right. uh, and with a, a provision for global partnership um, to sort of guide the international effort, uh, particularly aimed at developing countries mm -hmm. uh, to accelerate progress. Um, that set the stage for the first 15 years of the new millennium. Okay. Uh, the Sustainable Development Goals um, uh, were established through a mechanism, um, a mandate that was established in Rio in 2012 uh, at the summit, uh, Rio Plus 20. It was a, a sort of a continuation of the Sustainable Development uh, Summit uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the mandate came from there to establish a w an open working group mm -hmm. and a mechanism, uh, this time much more broadly uh, consultative uh, and uh, involving civil society, the academia, the general public, in consultations leading to the establishment of this new set of sustainable development goals. Okay. Um, the framework this time is also more ambitious because mm -hmm. it brings together the social, the economic, and the environmental sustainability aspects of development mm -hmm. underpinned with uh, aspirations for a peaceful society, peace and security right. um, dimensions. So it is much more ambitious, it's more integrated, uh, and also it is um, uh, universal, applies to all countries, not just developing countries. Now, did it grow out in any way from the original millennial, Millennium Goals that were set? So there's some overlap of the, of the goals that were set? Yes, yes? definitely. Okay. There, were, there had been um, a massive effort uh, right. during the 15 first years of the millennium to accelerate implementation on, you know, el eliminating, halving um, uh, extreme poverty, reducing child uh, and maternal mortality mm -hmm. rates, uh, uh, increasing enrollment in schools, etc. Right, okay. um, towards the um, latter half of the 15-year uh, period, um, we all started to engage in very intense reviews mm -hmm. uh, and analysis of progress that had been made towards the Millennium Development okay. Goals. Uh, and um, in some areas, um, the goals were achieved. For example, the poverty goal, okay. um, the water, clean water goal was also achieved. Okay, so over the course of the 15 years, poverty was um, halved. halved. Okay. That's correct. All right. uh, but then we also realized very quickly that the progress was not 
equitable. Okay. We didn't find evidence that even where there had been reductions in mortality, that the reductions were happening in the communities that were most affected or the most disadvantaged uh, children or women were benefiting. And it became quickly clear that we were dealing with a generalized situation of inequalities mm -hmm. and inequity. Right. Uh, so equity became the main focus uh, of the analysis to try and identify where the most disadvantaged communities were, where the most disadvantaged and vulnerable children were, and what their situation was. Mm -hmm. um, during the drive towards the 2015, um, most goals were established in terms of percentage coverage. Okay. And so very soon uh, you had you know, achievements in 75% coverage, 80% coverage, um, and the question became, so what's happening to the 20% mm -hmm. that's not being reached because we have been celebrating 80% coverage for you know, 10, 15 years. Right, right. And so the focus turned to those most disadvantaged communities for which new strategies were required, new interventions and uh, okay. approaches were, were brought in. So the SDGs builds on that. Okay. That's why, for example, one of the key themes of the SDGs is on leave no one behind, mm -hmm. which is a, a critical consideration at the core of the thinking and the philosophy there that it should we should try and reach the fathers behind first, deliberately, right. not through a trickle-down process. Okay. So how many um, sustain sustainable development goals are there? There are 17, 17. goals 17. in okay. total. And then how many, I know you're focused on children, how many of those are specifically aimed at children? So all of the goals, including goals related to you know, uh, safe cities, mm -hmm. um, uh, and um, uh, uh, sustainable consumption, okay. climate, climate. Uh, etc., are all related to yes. children and future generations okay. yes. in to one way or people, the other. Really. To but all people, really. But are there any specifically there are, aimed at children? Okay. There definitely are. There are the. There is, uh, for example, the goal related to poverty uh, eradication. This time, um, the sustainable development goals go beyond what was in the MDGs. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the unfinished agenda, it's much more ambitious. It aims to eliminate uh, poverty rather than just reduce it by a percentage point or the other. And we're looking at another 15-year goal. 15 years to 2030. Years, poverty will be erad eradicated. eradicated. Okay. So in 20, you know, in 2030, um, for example, uh, the goals on health are much more ambitious. You know. The goal on uh, nutrition, mm -hmm. also. Um, so, on are stunting. vaccines part of the, the health? Vaccines part? are part of that. Uh, the elimination of preventable diseases mm -hmm. uh, is uh, included. Universal coverage okay. um, with health services is also included. So, yes, uh, in health, in nutrition, uh, in access to basic sanitation, uh, hygiene, etc., mm -hmm. education, and even protection. Uh, the Millennium Development Goals didn't have a specific goal on child protection issues, but the SDGs do have a goal okay. on protection, um, which aims to uh, eliminate and end all forms of violence, abuse, and exploitation, mm -hmm. and even torture against okay. children. Wow. So it's much more comprehensive and hence the slightly larger number of goals right. and targets. Okay. I am curious how these goals are going to be achieved or implemented. So how does the UN work with the rest of the world to ensure that these goals are met? So the first um, thing to bear in mind when it comes to the SDGs is that they are universal mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that there is, um, if you look at the issue of inequalities, whether you're looking at gender inequality, income inequality, or inequality in terms of access to basic social services, mm -hmm. et cetera, um, you'd realize that all countries, whether industrialized um, or middle-income countries or least developed countries, have issues of inequalities. Right. Um, and so the first point is that the, these goals are, or this agenda for the next 15 years is applicable universally. Mm -hmm. The second is that because of the focus on tackling the inequalities that are embedded in our current uh, development uh, strategies and approaches, um, 
there's a, a, a huge emphasis on utilizing disaggregated data. Mm -hmm. In other words, collecting information, statistics, that allows you to disaggregate information to the levels below the national sample where you can identify clearly those segments of the community mm -hmm. that have the particular problems that you want to tackle, okay. so that in your strategies and in your resource allocation, you're much more deliberate and focused in, in terms of your approaches. So the use of disaggregated data will help implementation. This time around, thirdly, there is a means of implementation provision in the document itself through the intergovernmental negotiations okay. where the member states discussed the financing for development mm -hmm. options. And how many member states are there? There's 193 okay. member states. So all of them signed up. Okay. So there are provisions for financing, mm -hmm. uh, particularly domestic resource mobilization okay. to support the agenda. Um, of course, complemented with international development assistance, the sure. overseas development assistance. and financing for development is built around the issue of climate, economic, um, uh, and uh, social dimensions. And then there is technology transfer, capacity building, training, uh, innovation, mm -hmm. and other forms of provisions that would allow a global partnership um, between uh, the, among the countries sure. that would make it possible for field level implementation. Then. The monitoring is established through what they call the follow-up and review mm -hmm. process. How often uh, is that done? So every year, countries uh, on a voluntary basis will provide uh, country reports on the processes and the results that they uh, are uh, able to record mm -hmm. um, relative to the various goals. Right. There are also thematic um, reports, so you could take inequalities as a theme on which countries who are making progress or are facing specific constraints mm -hmm. uh, would report on their country experience trying to tackle the issue of right, inequalities. Right. So there's thematic reports. And then, um, so you would have national level reporting uh, done by the countries and regional commissions um, would um, orchestrate and facilitate regional uh, regional reports, parts of the world. Parts right. of the okay. world and then a global report. Right. What is fascinating in the new dispensation is that there is also um, uh, an established mechanism for oversight mm -hmm. uh, of the SDGs and the implementation called the High Level Political Forum. And who um, comprises that? Member states. Okay. Uh, so there is a select number of member states who um, sit at this uh, uh, forum uh, and it, they have the ultimate um, responsibility to review country reports, identify bottlenecks, mm -hmm. uh, and work with member states to try and find solutions right. um, to help countries uh, deal with bottlenecks and sure. barriers. That so if someone face. is falling behind on their implementation in, in terms of reaching the goals, there is uh, assistance for them. Yes, there should be theoretically a mechanism through the High Level Political mm -hmm. Forum where you match those needs with possible resources mm -hmm. from uh, uh, friendly and like-minded right. countries. Um, and that is, I think, um, one of the exciting things. So if you take the case of small island developing states, mm -hmm. so-called SIDS, um, they ha usually have limited resources but right. enormous problems um, of um, related to climate change right. adaptation and mitigation. Sure. Um, and so they would uh, present their situation through their country reports or even as a regional group mm -hmm. at the high level political forum and then you would have member states discuss um, means of uh, collaborating I with see. them. And in fact uh, you had mentioned innovation earlier when you were speaking. Um, can you give some examples of how innovation can assist in reaching some of these goals? Yes, definitely. I mean, innovations, uh, both uh, in terms of technology as mm -hmm. well as um, those uh, innovations that are ideas driven. So, mm -hmm. if you take technology, the use of broadband technology, for example, made it possible mm -hmm. even during the intergovernmental process uh, that created the agenda mm -hmm. to reach out to 
civil society organizations to general public to young people. Um, we had a, we had young people on a platform, the the world we want, mm -hmm. uh, where they voted on the top priority issues that they would like they mm -hmm. wanted to see addressed in the new. Um, uh, development goals. So the use of the deployment of uh, broadband technology um, to mobilize um, local communities uh, to disseminate information about the goals, mm -hmm. uh, share best practice, and to cross-fertilize is, um, is one, one possibility. So many countries are deploying new forms of technology uh, and social media uh, platforms to try and popularize and make the agenda famous mm -hmm. and get um, uh, children and young people involved. So for example, they're teaching about their goals in many schools as we do here at mm -hmm. Yale. Um, there is the so-called the world's largest classroom mm -hmm. through which all students are learning same uh, lessons across a hundred plus countries. Wow, and Just how is that orchestrated? getting young people um, to read the child-friendly versions mm -hmm. of this uh, dense documents right, from right. the UN mm -hmm. uh, and have um, the teachers trained on how to uh, explain uh, the goals to children mm -hmm. uh, and what they can do about it okay. um, and how they could participate uh, in their own communities to raise awareness about climate uh, issues or about inclusiveness or discrimination mm -hmm. Uh, etc. So right. that's uh, that's one possibility. The other possibility is, as I mentioned, through technology transfer, mm -hmm. um, where uh, you know you're dealing with uh, dig the digital gap and technology gap between rich and poor countries, etc. Mm -hmm. There is a, a provision, for example, for uh, technology facilitation. It's called the technology facilitation mechanism, through which um, um, least developed countries um, would work with uh, advanced economies to try and bridge this gap mm -hmm. uh, so as not to reinvent the wheel each time right. they needed to do something, right, right. build a resilient school or, or put together some weatherproofing for their communities. Mm -hmm. um, so technology and innovation in that sense is extremely important mm -hmm. uh, to help countries leapfrog right. Um, a lot of countries have wireless, um, you know, are, are even more advanced in terms of the United States, in terms of their, wa their mobile um, cellular expansion in their countries. Is that correct. going to be used in, in any capacity? Absolutely. That's exactly what I was referring okay. to. So, for example, the penetration with SMS technology, mm -hmm. uh, short messaging system technology, um, is very um, effective uh, in getting local communities to communicate mm -hmm. with uh, authorities, uh, women's groups to communicate among themselves, right. co cooperatives, uh, young people in youth associations and clubs, etc. So for example, we are working um, with some non-governmental organizations. I was actually going to ask and, um, you about that, yeah. Yes, uh, so they are taking target 16.2, which is about ending violence against children abuse, exploitation, and torture, mm -hmm. um, developing a, 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 a platform, uh, a, a technology platform based on SMS and uh, the use of broadband mm -hmm. technology um, to allow students in schools and out of school to monitor how well their child protection systems are working. Mm -hmm. So for example, if there's a gap between um, what's supposed to be happening in terms of bullying in classrooms, et cetera. Students are able to use uh, the platform to communicate mm -hmm. the fact that nothing is being done or an ombudsperson has been established but does not function effectively, et right. cetera, to allow authorities to correct these mm -hmm. gaps. The use of uh, SMS technology could facilitate right. such a, a platform. And when you're using these technologies, you also have the possibility of aggregating the information upwards. Sure. So from several communities, um, the possibility of learning from each other, right. et cetera. So okay. yeah, this, these are the things that are okay. exciting about the new agenda. And then um, in terms of health initiatives, are you also working with um, you know, health NGOs also in terms of vaccinations and, and getting the word out through that type of group? 
Yes. Yeah. Um, so for children specifically, you know, there are a few uh, really big ambitious um, targets that we, we have in the agenda. Um, take child poverty. There are a number of NGOs working with UN agencies and of course member states uh, in concerned countries to try and uh, put in place projects to reduce and eventually eliminate child poverty. Mm -hmm. Of the billion or so people who live in extreme poverty um, right. in our world today, easily half, 47 percent half, almost uh, our children. Right. Uh, so you, we do have a massive um, problem with child poverty. Um, and then we have the issue of child mortality. Mm -hmm. um, and in most cases also preventable. Right. For um, malaria, for instance, so malaria, comes to malaria, diarrhea, pneumonia, mm -hmm. um, other vaccine preventable diseases, right. etc. Um, and so we have uh, a challenge there because we know what to do. It's been done successfully in other countries. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to work together with concerned countries to particularly drive down under five mortality. Mm -hmm. And within that, that category, to focus on um, newborn mortality. In other words, children or infants dying in the first 28 days of life, mm -hmm. which now constitutes about 45% of the under five mortality uh, wow. uh, number. Um, that is related to maternal mortality, where you have you know, the possibility of uh, dying uh, in childbirth or in complications related to childbirth in a place like in West Africa, in Sierra Leone mm -hmm. uh, and other places, compared to your country or Norway, 16, 16 times the chance right. of, uh, of of dying, giving birth. Right. Um, we need to be able to work on that to and reduce that level right. of... Is uh, it because hospitals are not as prevalent in those areas of the world and that's the issue? So for, for newborn health uh, and maternal mortality, that's precisely the, the problem. It had been easier to reduce the other forms of infectious diseases and save lives. But now we're, we're down to those conditions that require an effective health system, not just a vaccine. Mm -hmm. It's important, but right. it needs a system to carry it through. Right. So pregnancy is nine month process. Even before pregnancy, the health of the young uh, mother, etc., including adolescent girls. Mm -hmm. um, it's extremely important that countries invest uh, in their health. So that nutrition we, especially Nutrition too. especially. Uh, and their protection so that we start off um, in a way that um, allows them to survive right. pregnancy and childbirth. So it's extremely important to, to push in those areas. Then, um, you know, we have things like HIV, malaria, tuberculosis, those big diseases that right. are killers of children right. that are in the agenda that we need to push right. to eliminate. Right. Um, and so, you know, malaria, tuberculosis, HIV are still big ticket items for HIV children. HIV is um, a little bit more difficult though because there's also cultural things around that. Yes, yes. It's, you know, in all of these issues, there is the underlying issue of the social determinants and the cultural practices, mm -hmm. taboos and uh, customs right. that drive certain behaviors right. um, uh, and how people, uh, local people, uh, perceive or understand what is going on. Right. Um, so in addition to this, the health services, we are challenged to educate exactly yes. and also social mobilize mm -hmm. uh, and uh, elevate the health literacy levels so that people themselves are able to know what to do right. uh, like we all do when our kids fall sick, we know what right. to do, etc. So the social aspects uh, and the social mobilization, health literacy levels are extremely important. Technology and innovation is important in that area by disseminating information through SMS mm -hmm. uh, and smartphones to people about these diseases, how to prevent them and what to do if you get to see a sig uh, sign. Um, it's a very, very effective way mm -hmm. of, um, of communicating uh, easily with right. local communities. Okay. Um, and then nutrition uh, is the other thing that we, we need to work on for young children. Um, 
in today's world, we still have undernutrition, mm -hmm. but this time with an increasing problem of obesity as well in children, so you have a double burden there mm -hmm. um, in industrialized countries as well as in developing countries that we need to work on. Right. So there are some big things for children that we need to right. hit yeah. uh, moving forward. And it sounds very ambitious as it is. well. So. It is, and the hope is that countries will get together. Right. Um, to, um, to pull assets and resources to be able to get uh, some traction. Right, it is absolutely clear to me that the new agenda uh, cannot be implemented single-handedly by any ministry or department of mm -hmm. health or education um, or by a government in isolation. It right. requires, and there's provision in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development um, um, for for that level of partnership, mm -hmm. uh, that global partnership that allows um, countries to pool resources right. and create some synergies, because the ambi because of the ambition level, it's beyond the scope of any of individual course, country. Exactly. So let's talk about the class you're teaching here at Yale. What are you What are you teaching your students in terms of how they can make a difference in this process? So the first semester was devoted to the origins of the SDGs mm -hmm. uh, and Agenda 2030. Um, we discussed uh, where the whole notion of sustainable development comes from and how the three dimensions, the socioeconomic, uh, environmental sustainability aspects connect right. uh, with the peace and security um, uh, underpinnings uh, to create uh, a framework mm -hmm. that is universally accepted. As you know, the agenda was um, universally adopted um, in September last year uh, by all the heads of state at the UN uh, SDG summit. Um, so we've gone through that. Uh, we've discussed the financing arrangements through the means of implementation mm -hmm. uh, processes that I was um, uh, outlining earlier. Uh, and have been discussing how the implementation will be done. Okay. Um, you know, how countries would go through a process of translating these global goals into national development plans mm -hmm. and making them uh, actionable uh, at country level uh, through a process of mainstreaming. So the mainstream um, the SDGs into their national development plans. They identify areas where there needs to be accelerated action, right. so there'll be acceleration there, and then policy support for international cooperation so that partnerships can be formed within the country as well as externally, mm -hmm. plus raising the resources through the budget process right. in country to support, and then identifying gaps that maybe other countries can help with. Mm -hmm. So there's a a process of what we call you know, maps, mainstreaming, acceleration, policy mm -hmm. support, and financing uh, arrangements uh, that's ongoing. And then the data aspects uh, we've also looked at uh, partly. Um, we went to the UN to pay a visit so the students could see uh, some live sessions going on mm -hmm. and appreciate the complexity of intergovernmental uh, and mechanisms and the processes, uh, and it was very, uh, very useful. Uh -huh. um, um, next semester, we are going to be devoting much more time to dealing with the technical, substantive aspects of child health uh, and development. Mm -hmm. So this time, we've been understanding SDGs, MDGs, you know, uh, primary health care strategies, the concept notes. Um, so we're going to go in depth uh, depending on the area of study of the students. Mm -hmm. We will select uh, specific areas for them to research into, uh, link them up with um, um, willing and like-minded institutions, uh, um, some of them in the UN, others in the non-governmental sector who are doing uh, work in this area mm -hmm. and they'll learn from them right. um, during the second semester. So at the yeah. end, um, we will have uh, a full understanding of the SDG process as well as the technical aspects of how uh, child health and development aspects will actually be implemented, monitored, and reported on from the field. Okay, great. Sounds like very important work, and I thank you for being here thank with you. us today.
Thank you very much indeed. Sure. For more information about Dr. Alapui and his research, please visit our website at macmillanreport.yale.edu. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale. 